Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Snowboard Pro Camp live chat. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm here in Whistler, BC, Canada. I'm gonna be answering all your snowboard questions for the next hour. Uh, thank you guys all for tuning in already. See, we already have 19 people on the live stream. Um, yeah, definitely hit me up with any snowboard question you guys have, whether it's beginner questions, trick questions, gear questions. Um, yeah, open to anything. This is also a super chat, so if you have a question that you really need answering, hit that super chat button. It's an awesome way to support the channel as well. Um, but yeah, stoked to be here with you guys. At the moment here in Whistler, we got some rain going on. The rain's coming down, uh, but that's good because if it gets a little bit colder, then that's gonna mean snow in the mountain. And uh, just some plans for myself. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually heading back to New Zealand. So gonna be in New Zealand for about another 10 days of, of snowboarding. Um, just getting getting that early early season here in, but I guess it's the end of, end of the season over in New Zealand. So stoked to head back down there. But yeah, stoked uh, for everyone to jump on here. And yeah, shout outs first to uh, Thomas. Thanks for jumping on, man. A million pop off. Uh, Rambo John J says it's 100 degrees in Atlanta. That's pretty hot, man. Uh, yeah, and if you, when you guys ask the question too, let me know where you guys are watching from. It's awesome to hear where everyone where everyone's at. I'll, Osvaldo's in Colorado. Shout out, man. Uh, we got Max Doblin, my very own. Uh, wants a review of the Solomon Ultimate Ride. Uh, yeah, we'd love to get on some Solomon boards this winter, so hopefully get some reviews out for you. We got Gary on here saying to come to Tahoe. And we got Ellie Colasa. We got Classic Compilations. Wants to know how long will you be back in Cardrona? So I'm going to be snowboarding there from the 6th uh, until the 15th. So... Um, hopefully like nine or 10 days of snowboarding, but gonna be staying in Wanaka again and really, uh, really stoked to get back there. Uh, Jack says, can't wait to get back on snow. Life and Fishing says, will you come to Big Snow America, the indoor resort in New Jersey? Uh, I heard about that, yeah, that's a possibility. It's pretty cool that there's a big new indoor ski resort going up in New Jersey. That's, uh, that's a good reason to visit the, the East Coast, so uh, possibly. No plans at the moment. Uh, Genus likes the David Jones poster. Yeah, so David gave me that poster in New Zealand. If you guys don't know David's channel, he's another snowboard YouTuber. And uh, yeah, he was kind enough to, to give me that poster there. Uh, Mount Shredmore says you should come to Lake Louise this season. It's my home mountain and love it. Uh, yeah, I need to get out there. I've never been over to Lake Louise or I've never even been to Alberta, Canada before. So maybe I'll have to uh, hit that up. And Sonora Bassa says that <laughs> that fresh beanie, uh, so good. Thanks. Yeah, it's a new Snowboard Pro Camp beanie. I uh, got the uh, the black edition out, so if you guys, uh, in the description, there's links to where you guys can check out some Snowboard Pro Camp beanies. Um, awesome way to, another just cool way to support the channel. Uh, Nicholas is on here. What's up, Ellie? Ellie wants to know, what are good snowboard boots? Um, the best snowboard boots are the ones that are really just comfortable to you. I would say like I've tried lots of different boots and it doesn't really, to me it doesn't matter like how flashy the boots are, what kind of tech is in them. The main thing is that they're comfortable and uh, I've, I've been pretty lucky with, uh, with Vans boots lately. Um, so I, I'd recommend trying on some Vans boots. I found them to be extremely comfortable. I know that TJ, um, who's also on the channel, he uh, loves riding the Adidas boots, finds those very uh, comfortable. So maybe uh, trying a couple pair, pairs of those. Uh, Heroin Zumi says, last weekend for Perisher and Hotham this week, Mount Rapehu is looking fat. <laughs> I'm super jelly. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's the last, the end of the season for Australia, but uh, New Zealand is, is pushing along. Still got those cold temperatures and, and lots of snow. Tyler Jones says, are you planning on going to Big Bear this season? So Big Bear, California. Uh, we'd love to get down to Big Bear. I think we're, I think we're definitely gonna make it happen at some point. Uh, so yeah, the park at Big Bear looks, looks like really fun. So definitely wanna go check it out. 
Uh, yeah, shout out to Lucas from Spain, Jonathan from Pennsylvania, Ben from Nevada, Mike from Massachusetts. Awesome, guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Karan, Karan Saraf asks, uh, from Manchester, UK, how do you progress from carving in an S shape traversing the slope facing across the mountain to the faster carving where your board is always pointed down the mountain? Um, yeah, so basically you start to get more comfortable pointing your board down the mountain when you start being able to scrub some speed around uh, the carve. So as you're coming around the turn, the, the way that you pressure your board and create some pressure so that you're actually like spraying a bit of snow and then cutting your speed will allow you to continue to have your board pointed straight down. Because at the moment, it sounds like at the end of the turn, you're, you're coming into it with so, so much speed that you have to then cut across the slope to, to cut some of your speed to get comfortable again to go for the next um, S-carve. So it's about controlling your speed, slowing yourself down a little bit um, around the turn so that you can then at the end, let your board go straight. And uh, I feel like a big part of just allowing your board to go more straight is being more comfortable with controlling your speed. So it's something that you, you just work up into. Uh, but yeah, start on some mellower slopes. De definitely take it maybe back to like a green slope where you can just get comfortable doing those uh, carves and letting your board go straight. And then as you get more comfortable with it, then you can start taking it to, to blues and even black runs. Uh, Tyler says, hey Kevin, watching from New Mexico. How do you keep your season pass secure while riding? Yeah, good question, Tyler. So I usually keep it on in a pocket on my left, the left side of my body. I usually have one pocket that's like a dedicated like pass pocket. So I don't put anything else in there except for my pass because at most places now there's a scanner on your left side. So it scans the pass and you don't want your phone or keys or anything interrupting that signal. So uh, I think it's usually in my pants pocket on my left. That's where I put my put my pass. I know some jackets actually come with like a, a pass pocket in the, in the arm. Uh, so that's like a cool way to do it as well. Um, but yeah, that's where I keep mine. Adrian says, hi Kevin, greetings from Germany. Awesome. And Nicholas is also from Germany. Daniel Rotar from Mount Hood. Uh, Bruno Jones says, looking for a job as a snowboard instructor. Uh, Bruno, man, just go make it happen. Like go to uh, a resort somewhere near you and just show up, start talk to see who you need to talk to to get a job. And I feel like snowboard instructor, it's one of those jobs where if you just go and seek it out, then uh, it'll come to you. That's how I got my first job uh, as an instructor. I, uh, I just, I think I called the resort and they told me to come in and talk to somebody and they gave me the job. So I think it's down to that. Chuck Van is watching from Jindabyne, Australia. What's up, man? Uh, Potato Gamer says, come back to Chile. Yeah, definitely. I'll be back next August for sure. I'll see you in August. Uh, Armin says, yo, Kevin, uh, I haven't watched in a while, but I'm stoked for the upcoming season. Uh, well, thanks for coming back. Yeah, stoked to have you back on here. Uh, Francis says, coming back from Revy, should I ride at Grouse or Cyprus? Oh, that's a tough question. I've heard, I've heard actually better things about Cyprus. So maybe Cyprus is uh, your mountain, but I think both are good. I know Grouse has a great park. Um, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to ride more park? I think Cyprus has more terrain for free riding. So, but then Grouse has that cool view of the city. But my leanings would maybe maybe be towards Cyprus. But coming from Revy, that's like uh, that's gonna be a big change for you. Uh, Classic Compilations asks, got any tips for frontside 360s? I'm going a bit off axis, and I always and always landing backwards and hurting the wrist. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, when you want to get a, a clean and level. Uh, front side 360, the way to stay balanced is that when you go to pop off of 
whatever you're jumping off, whatever lip, is you need to pop nice and level. So it sounds at the, like at the moment, you're leaning back as you pop the, the 360. Or you may not even be popping like enough. You could just be riding off, and then by riding off, you may be leaning back naturally. So think about getting that, that clean, clean level pop off of both feet. That's what's gonna get you up into the air level, and then you'll have a level landing. So yeah, really think about that. Clean pop, level, level takeoff will mean a level landing. Uh, Mike Kaur says, you have helped me to start snowboarding and have already hit uh, blacks because of your channel. Uh, you are the man. <laughs> awesome, Mike. That's uh, great to hear. Yeah, I'm super stoked that the, the videos helped you progress that much. That's amazing. Uh, Adrian wants to know, what about the Union Strata Yellow? Uh, how is the stiffness? So the Union Stratas, they're pretty much like a mid-flex. So that just middle of the road binding, it's not going to be like super stiff for carving and powder, but it's not going to be really soft for jibs and, and maybe like, uh, like entry level binding. It's like that right in the middle of the road, I think, mid-flex binding. Uh, Armin wants to know, are you planning a Euro trip? Greetings from Germany. Uh, yeah, I think the, tr uh, the plan is to hit up Italy sometime in this winter, but we're going to keep an eye on the weather and really play the weather. So uh, I've got an app, it's called snowforecast.com and going to be looking at the weather in Europe. And if, if Europe's getting good snow, definitely going to, going to book that trip. Uh, Trevor says, I'm moving to Breck and need some proper winter shoes. Any suggestions? <laughs> yeah, winter, winter shoe suggestions. Honestly, my favorite pair of winter shoes have been um, the uh, Nike Lunar Force Ones. I don't know if they still make them or if they make them as good as they, they did the year that I had them, but those are my favorite winter shoes by far. Nike Lunar Force Ones. All right, Stefan. Hi, I'll be giving snowboard lessons. I'll be giving snowboard lessons this season. What kind of board do you recommend to give lesson to give lessons on? Greetings from Holland. Uh, that's awesome, man. Great to hear. I think uh, when I taught snowboarding, the thing with uh, the thing with teaching is that you never know what kind of level you're going to get. Whether you're at least when I was teaching, you could be teaching a beginner, you could be teaching somebody in the park, or you could be teaching someone. Um, in the back country, like not in the back country, but in powder or, you know, on uh, steep runs or carving. So you kind of want like a good do everything type of board. Um, when I was teaching, I was, you know, mainly focused on like my park riding. So I had a park board for pretty much the entire time I taught snowboarding, but you could also go for like a hybrid, um, a park board, all, like a park all mountain board, maybe something in between. Um, Something that, yeah, is just very versatile. So for any lesson you get, you'll be uh, prepared and not have to run them back, back and forth changing boards. Uh, Aiden says, have you ever rode the Burton Family Tree Trick Pilot? And if so, what's your thoughts on it? Um, yeah, I have actually ridden that uh, board. I rode it uh, two seasons ago. And yeah, the Trick Pilot seemed like a, it was a really fun, responsive um, sort of freestyle board. And yeah, I thought it was felt light, felt very snappy, lots of pop, um, but could still press it. So yeah, it was a it was a fun board. All right. Tiger X Gaming, would you ever use hard wax over hot wax? Um, so like the hard kind of rub on wax. I don't think so. I feel like the hot wax is just the way to go. It's pretty easy to do it yourself or just drop it off um, and pay somebody to do it as well. I, I mostly do it myself. I recently, when I was in Australia, I didn't have all my waxing gear. So I dropped it off at the mountain and got a, like, I think it was a $10 hot wax. But yeah, I think that's the, that's the way to go. It just soaks into your board much better. And then you're set for four or five days of riding. Uh, Garrett wants to know, planning on snowboarding with Matt Mania uh, this year, Kevin. I think you're talking about Matt Maniachi. Uh, yeah, I'm down to snowboard with Matt. If, uh, if, he, if we're going to be in the same spot, yeah, that'd be amazing. 
Uh, Profound Darkness One says, "You still using the Vans high standard boots?" Um, not anymore. I was I rode them for about uh, three or four months, and then I I kind of felt like they were they were wearing out. I was riding them almost every day, uh, but yeah, I love them. I thought they were very comfortable. Um, probably the most comfortable boot I've ever ridden. So yeah, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend them. Um, but I did move on to a different pair of boots, the Vans Sequels. And the Vans Sequels is a little bit of a stiffer boot. And uh, they're also very comfortable and um, I'm liking them as well. So yeah, I've been on two pairs of Vans in the last, uh, I guess, maybe uh, eight months. And Michael Billing says, you should come to Jay Peak in Vermont. Uh, could get my IG and <laughs> could you give my IG a shout out? Uh, at Snowboard New England. Ah, very cool. Yeah, shout out Michael Billing. Instagram at Snowboard New England. Nice man. Yeah, Million Popoff says, I just saw an Instagram Instagram ad uh, with crash pants and they were using clips from your videos. Yeah, I saw that uh, post a, a million pop off and uh, I don't know who did that, but I think they only had like 10 followers and so I don't know. I don't know what to, what can you do about that. I think I, I like uh, made a comment or something, but I'm not too worried about it. They only had like 10 followers, so. Uh, it's it's kind of weird when you see somebody take your content and then rebrand it, but whatever. I don't think too many people are going to see it. Uh, Gallico says, what about Battalion brands? Uh, yeah, Battali Battalion boards are pretty cool. They're known for their 3BT tech, so that's triple base technology where you have um, a, sp a spoon shape in the tip and tail. And I think it's it's pretty cool if you want a board that's a very like loose, quick turning board. Uh, for me though, I'm not a huge fan for the th of the three BT, just because I feel like you lose uh, some stability and you kind of feel like you're. For me, it felt it felt like the board was a little bit too loose. I like to have uh, more control personally. Uh, Thomas says, what's the best game plan for a three-day Whistler trip? What are the hot spots? Uh, the hot spots are definitely, um, you definitely want to hit both mountains, but peak chair on Whistler, um, glacier chair on Blackcomb, I would say glacier chair on Blackcomb and seventh heaven chair on Blackcomb as well. Um, I would, I'd spend one full day on Whistler and then two days on Blackcomb exploring, but uh, yeah, just get as high as you can to the tops of the mountains and just go exploring. Uh, but yeah, definitely stay at your own, right your own limit. There's some pretty gnarly double blacks up there. So yeah, just look, uh, <laughs> do what's comfortable for you. And uh, yeah, you can't go wrong. Three days, you'll only be scratching the surface of all the uh, terrain to explore on Whistler and Blackcomb. All right. Gippy Lion says, your opinion about the K2 Cool Bean? Uh, yeah, the K2, so for, if you guys don't know, the K2, K2 Cool Bean is a like powder specific board by K2. And it's also a pretty reasonably priced board. So I think it's a good, a good entry level powder board. So if you're looking for a board that only does powder and you want like a, yeah, a dedicated powder board, I think the K2, K2 Cool Bean could be for you. It looks like uh, it's got that larger nose to help you float and then the swallow tail to uh, help you sink in the back and um, looks like it floats really well in powder. So it could be a good entry level pow board. All right. Uh, Kyle says, bro, your uh, board slides are coming together on urban rails. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, I got some, uh, had a good time in New Zealand sliding some rails. Uh, they were, they weren't too urban. I guess they're urban-ish. They were, they were still in the terrain park on the mountain, but uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it was a good time doing some, uh, doing some park and some rail riding in New Zealand. Uh, all right. Curious Astra says, hey from Auckland, please suggest some places for someone who wants to visit Canada and has just started doing snowboarding ex except Whistler. 
All right, some places for someone who wants to visit Canada. Um, so if you don't want to accept Whistler, you don't want to visit Whistler. Um, I don't know. There's so many good places, really. There's if you drive, if you go east from Whistler, there's probably like 30 amazing resorts and mountains to check out. So um, you got Revelstoke, you got Fernie, you got Sunshine Village, you got Sun Peaks, uh, Golden. There's like Red Mountain. There's like endless mountains out there. So uh, just uh, plan your trip and and get out there. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, snowboard ride ride trip says, how did you get popular on YouTube? Just making making videos, making the videos that I liked and and I thought pe uh, people might find useful. So, all right, just gonna scroll down, guys, a little bit. Get to the first super chat. Oh wow! Thanks a lot for all the questions, guys. I definitely need to uh, read through these quicker because you guys are asking a ton of questions. I like, all right, so first super chat from Tyler Jones. Thanks, Tyler, for the support, man. He says, I was wondering if you knew any good snowboard pants for bigger legs and what goggles you recommend for the season. All right, so I'll start with the goggle uh, answer. I definitely, so I've recently picked up a pair of Anon M4s and I've been loving them. I think uh, peripheral wise and just the way you can see through the goggle is amazing. You don't really see the lens at all. Um, Oakley, also the Oakley Line Miners are a pretty solid goggle. Um, in terms of uh, pants, that's a, actually a really good point. I recently had a pair of pants that were uh, pretty tight around my waist and they actually made it difficult to snowboard in so you do want to get pants that are comfortable that are baggy enough for your legs uh, to be honest I don't really have the best answer for you maybe check out some if you're not opposed to some bibs um, check out some bib pants I've had a pair of Dekine and Volcom bibs that have been very comfortable very loose uh, so check out some of those but uh, yeah, try on some pants and yeah, make sure that you're comfortable in them that yeah, there's nothing worse than when you're snowboarding feeling restricted by your pants or jacket or anything. You don't want to feel restricted at all. So yeah, definitely just try on, try on a few different pairs. Uh, the pair of pants that were really restrictive on me were the, I think they're called the Volcom, um, uh, what are they called? low something Vulcan low roll or low fit or something like that but yeah I'll let you guys know what they were but they were just terrible they were like I'm not I'm not I'm I'm a skinny guy and the fact that the pants were like restricting me was was kind of ridiculous all right so Josh uh Josh Moo says snow guns are running in Colorado Oh, amazing. Uh, should be open by October 18th. Amazing. Yeah, I can't wait to, uh, for all the resorts to get open. That's that's great to hear. Uh, Mar Fishing with the, with the Super Chat says, uh, Taco Fund, LOL, keep up the great work. Awesome. Thanks for the support, Mar Fishing. Uh, Chris wants to know, you still in Australia? Uh, no, so I'm back in Whistler at the moment. Um, actually, TJ is back in Whistler as well. I think he's going to pop into the live chat in a little while. And yeah, going to New Zealand tomorrow. So I've had a pretty crazy couple weeks being in New Zealand, Australia, flying back to Canada, and then flying back again is uh, it's a th <laughs> sorry 13, 13 and a half hour flight. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. All right. A uh, million pop off with the super chat and says like that smash button y'all. Awesome. Hashtag DWCP hashtag Italy fund. Amazing. Thanks uh, a million pop off for the support man. Uh, Bad Rider says, Hey Kev, if you were, if you were to plan a snowboard trip through the U S what resorts would you hit up? Really good question, Adam. That's that's an awesome one. I would definitely, I would definitely hit probably Jackson Hole. It's pretty, pretty great, pretty nice spot. Lots of big steep terrain, lots of uh, incredible views. Really fun, uh, kind of like Western style town. 
Um, also love Oregon, Mount Bachelor in Oregon. Uh, some great tree riding at Mount Bachelor. Really good snow. Uh, another really fun town. There's a town close by there near named uh, Bend. Um, so uh, Mount Bachelor would be one. And yeah, where else? Maybe maybe Mammoth Mountain as well. Mammoth Mountain, California. You have uh, yeah, just like tons of terrain to explore um lots to do in the town so yeah there's three spots i think oh and <laughs> actually let me stick colorado in there as well so colorado uh copper breckenridge keystone those spots are pretty nice too so i would say that my favorite though at the moment i think would be jackson i really want to go back and explore jackson some more uh, Mammoth would maybe be my last choice just because the snow there I think is a little bit heavier than everywhere else. Uh, the Christo 413 says shortest resort lines, Utah or Colorado? Um, I've never snowboarded in Utah before, but I actually find that the lines in Colorado are pretty, pretty manageable. They're, they're not too bad. Definitely the longest lines are in, I think in Whistler. Whistler and Jackson's actually very pretty busy as well. Uh, SBBG says, do I need a specific binding for a board or can I buy any snowboard and any binding? Um, not necessarily. So you have to just, there's different, I guess, orientations or like ways that the, um, bindings mount to a board uh, most bindings though they will come with um, adapters so that they can get onto any snowboard but there are some specific bindings for example the Burton EST system so if you get Burton EST bindings they can't go on to any boards they they can only go on to Burton snowboards um, so that's one example I can't think of any others at the moment but I think that most snowboards have the like four hole configuration. So four screws going into the board. That's kind of the, the norm now. Um, but I think the only outlier is the Burton EST bindings that are, if you get the e Burton EST bindings, they have to go onto a Burton EST board. But you can put regular bindings onto the Burton EST boards because they have like an adapter plate. Uh, Alpine Arc says my season is starting soon. I think I'm going to start this season riding switch. Do you think that will help? Um, yeah, absolutely. I've actually uh, done a few seasons where I'll start the very first run of the season riding switch and uh, trying to ride as much switch as, as possible. I think switch is, um, is, is something that you want to practice even every single day. So anytime that you get to an area of the mountain that's um, you know, easy to ride normal, just uh, do it switch and challenge yourself. And the better you, of a switch rider you are, it'll also make your normal riding better as well. And then it's just perfect for uh, all the tricks you want to, to learn. So yeah, first run of the season switch is, uh, is a really good idea. Uh, Shaw T says, when's a good time to go to Whistler for snow and less crowds? I would say either before or after Christmas. I think that's kind of a, a good time to come here. During Christmas is obviously crazy. Um, and if you come too early, then you, there might not be enough snow. So I'd say either before, right before, like, um, you know, the first two weeks of December or the first two weeks of January. And pay attention to the holidays in the US because you, you want to avoid the American holidays. And you also want to avoid um, international holidays. There's a few like international holidays that can get kind of busy in, in Whistler, like Chinese New Year. And, and also in the spring, if there's like big school holidays, then that can make things uh, busy as well. All right, Chuck Van says 100 plus 100 in the chat. Uh, let's see some more thumbs. Yeah, awesome guys. 47 thumbs up already though. That's, uh, that's amazing. Thank you guys. And another super chat from B Kings. Um, thanks for the support, man. He says, uh, hey Kevin, is it better to do a board slide in the center of the board or under the bindings? 
Um, I think it's actually, it's easier to start learning in the center. Um, then you don't have to like, you don't have to worry about it. Um, sort of lining, it's easier to line it up so that you're directly centered. Uh, but as you start to get more comfortable with the center, then you can start to try to line it up under one foot or the other. Um, but yeah, I think just to start off, go, go centered and, uh, yeah, your board, your board should slide smooth as long as you keep it nice and flat. Um, but yeah, are you thinking of about doing them on some boxes or rails? Because if uh, when you're starting on boxes, it's definitely it's easier on, on boxes for sure to keep it under one foot because you can almost uh, ride on 50/50, and then you can twist and get your board sideways and even like visualize having one foot coming off the side of the box. And that's a really good way to learn board slides. Um, so that's a situation where you can go right into um, aiming to be under one foot. Uh, <laughs> Santi says, do you keep old snowboards like a Kev's Hall of Fame? Uh, yeah, I got, I do actually have a collection of old snowboards over there. I'm, I actually want to like, um, get rid of them, like not throw them out, but either sell them or give them to people that need them. Uh, but I just haven't gotten around to, uh, to doing that yet. But yeah, I do have a little, uh, yeah, Hall of Fame snowboards. They all have, uh, memories from different, uh, trips in different years. So yeah, it's cool to have uh, some old boards hanging around. Uh, XD Savage Cookie says, what are a good pair of mittens that will last? Uh, good question. So last season I wore analog mitts and I'm actually still wearing the same pair of mitts. They've held up really well and they're just very basic mitts. And uh, I think they're called the analog gentry mitt. And yeah, just basic, nothing fancy, not even super warm. They're just kind of like a mid-weight mitten. So um, if your hands tend to get really cold, maybe look at, look at some uh, heavier, thicker mitts. But for me, the, the analog gentry have been perfect and yeah, still wearing them. It's been uh, almost nine months of pretty consecutive riding. Uh, Ty Gallo says, um, how did the Australian snow prices of travel, accommodation, and food compare to Whistler? Um, I think Australia is, so it's, it's definitely cheaper than Whistler for sure. Um, Whistler is pretty expensive, especially for accommodation. There was, there's way more options for places to stay uh, in Australia. And so, yeah, last, actually this year, we actually had help. Uh, somebody offered to uh, rent us out. Uh, she rented at her, at her place uh, for like a discounted rate. So got that pretty cheap. But I think there's definitely the cost of living in Jindabyne, Australia is way lower than in, in Whistler for sure. Nick's Vlogs wants to know, Whistler, January versus February. Uh, both, both good. Both uh, snow, should be snowy and cold. So, uh, the life of CDs asks: Any chance of you and TJ coming back to Reno? I know it was cut short with you hitting your head hard when you and TJ crashed into each other. Yeah, we did. We crashed into each other pretty hard in that trip. Um, I think we may. Yeah, we may head back down there at some point. We're gonna look at. Just keep an eye on the weather, but would love to get back to North Star, get back to Tahoe, uh, riding uh, a few of those different resorts down there. So it would be fun to visit Reno again and get down there. I know that uh, Casey Willax, another snowboard YouTube tuber, is living in Tahoe this season. So maybe we can get down there and do some riding with him. Uh, B1 says, hey, Kevin, what's up from New York? What do you think of the Union Flight Pro bindings for the price? Are they worth it? Um, yeah, I think so. It kind of depends on what you want to do with your snowboarding. I think they're probably um, a little bit, actually, to be honest with you, I'm the Union Flight Pros. Are those the softer sort of entry level binding or are they a really expensive binding? I can't remember which one they are. But 
Yeah, it kind of depends on your own riding and your and your own snowboarding goals. If you think that they're going to help you to achieve your goals in snowboarding, then they may be worth the price to you. I'm not sure. Uh, the Christo413 with the super chat. Thanks for the support. Uh, better resorts and shorter lift lines. Uh, is that UT? Uh, Utah or Colorado? Um, I haven't ridden in Utah, so I don't know. But you, the lines in Colorado are pretty pretty okay. They're not. I haven't experienced crazy lines yet at in Colorado. Uh, Tobin, oh, what snowboard boots do you use personally? Uh, so I've got uh, Vans Sequel boots, and they're sort of like a mid flex, uh, comfortable Vans boot. Um, I definitely recommend them. Uh, Tyler Jones, where did you get that analog hoodie? It's badass. Uh, so I got it here in Whistler at a, uh, a shop called The Circle in Whistler Village. So shout out to The Circle in Whistler. All right, just going to get caught up a little bit, guys. Thanks for all the great questions. Uh, Ryan C., any thoughts on the GNU Newsoid? It's a directional asymmetrical board. I ordered one. Uh, showing up tomorrow um, Yeah, it looks like a really cool board. I feel like that that like I guess uh, It's like well asymmetrical big fan of it But the the fact that it's directional and kind of centered park board at the same time it uh, It looks looks like a really fun board. So I'm sure it'll be great BCDC says Endeavor uses the channel as well uh, ride and art Archi ar an archetype, if you can. Amazing powder board for steep and deep. Nice recommendation. Uh, Garrett says, this year my dad is giving me a chance to go snowboard wherever I want in the US and Canada. I'm thinking Whistler right now. What do you think? Uh, yeah, Whistler's, Whistler's pretty great. Um, yeah, I, I would say just go where where you want to go the most. Whistler's a good spot. Um, Adam says, 158 new beanies left. Uh, great way to show your support for the channel. Uh, shit, thanks, Adam, man. Uh, yeah, definitely. So I, I, I think I started with 200 beanies and we're down to 158. So thanks to everyone who's picked one up. Uh, the Christo413 says, besides the Orca, what's your favorite LibTech deck? Uh, I would say my favorite, yeah, so the Orca is great, great for powder, but then uh, my other favorite LibTech board is probably the Box Knife. So it's a, the Box Knife is a park board. It has just like tons of awesome tools on it. It's got the Magna Traction. It's got the C3 profile, so a little bit more camber dominant with slight rocker in between. And yeah, twin for the park. But the only reason, the only thing it's missing is uh, it doesn't have, it's not ASIM, which is why I picked up the GNU um, headspace instead. But I really like the, uh, the box knife was, uh, was a fun board. I got to ride it at the High Cascade Park in the summertime. So um, yeah, it was a really fun board. Uh, Florin says, um, is the following a good startup for a guy that wants to get into freestyle? Uh, Capita, super, super, Capita Super DOA plus Union Contact Pros. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good setup. I think that if you want to start getting into freestyle and park, you probably don't have to go all the way to the super DOA. You can maybe check out some of the other more entry level capita boards as well. Take a look at those. Um, but yeah, if you have your heart set on the super DOA, it's uh, yeah, it can be a good park board too. But I would maybe look at some of the cheaper, cheaper capita boards in the park lineup. Some of the boards that are just more entry level, uh, maybe the horoscope or um, what else is on there? There's a, there's a few more entry level boards that'll just uh, get you into the park without spending uh, 
so much money like the super, super like the super super DOA does. Uh, Ola says, uh, "Hey Kevin, do you have a special board for jibbing? How much shorter you think jib boards should be?" Um, no, I don't have a special jib board, so yeah, I've just been riding the GNU Headspace as my park board, and. It doesn't have to be super short for jibbing. So I'm 185 pounds and my board is a 159. And uh, I guess like if you're looking at a snowboard and you're you're somewhere on the scale, like your weight, you can either go a bit bigger or a bit smaller. It is better to go a little bit smaller for jibbing just because you don't need a lot of length uh, for hitting boxes and rails. So. I think, uh, yeah, shorter is better. So the 159 for me is is towards the shorter end of the scale. I could also get a board that for 185 pounds, I could go into the 160s, but then they would probably be too big for, for jibbing. And Ola wants to know, will you still visit Stubai this year? Um, so we're actually not going to Stubai this year uh, because of just some things came up with like scheduling and with uh, just some personal stuff. So it just didn't work out just uh, for us this season. So unfortunately going to miss Dubai, but <clears throat> had a great time there last year. Uh, Florence says, I'm not sure if I should wait for the Black Friday or just buy them now. Um, tough call. <laughs> tough call. Yeah, you do get some sales on Black Friday. Uh, I don't know if everything goes on sale. I guess probably you should probably wait unless it's something that unless you need it before Black Friday for a snowboard trip. But, you know, Black Friday is it is a ways away. <laughs> All right, just gonna scroll down guys a little bit, get caught up. You guys ask the best questions. Uh, Wilson with a super chat from New Zealand. Thanks for the support, Wilson. Uh, thoughts on the Burton Kilroy uh, Twin 2020? Uh, yeah, the Burton Kilroy Twin 2020. I think it's uh, it's pretty solid board. Just it's uh, I think the Burton Kilroy is one of those boards is like that standard sort of intermediate park board. Uh, so I don't know. To me, there's nothing that really stands out that's like super special about it. I think it's just uh, yeah, like a decent intermediate style uh, park board. But yeah, if you if you're in, in, into it, check it out. But uh, for me, there's nothing that really catches my eye about that board. All right. <laughs> uh, Eric says, hey, Kevin, do you ever lock the Orca or do you, or do you just never leave it out of your sight? Um, so I actually don't lock up my snowboards. I probably should, but I find that when you when you're on the mountain and you, and you put your board on a rack that has like 200 other boards, then you know probably nobody's gonna take <clears throat> take your board. But getting a lock is a good idea. I I have had one board stolen over the last say like 15 years ago. I think it was maybe eight years ago I had, yeah, I was actually teaching a snowboard lesson and while I was in for lunch, somebody stole my board and it was, it wasn't even a good board. It was like a, a board that was a few years old. It was like an old Burton Jeremy Jones board. And uh, yeah, some, somebody did steal my board one time, but yeah, I do have a couple locks. So um, if you guys are worried about your boards, I think you can pick up a lot lock for like 10 or $15 and yeah, have that, have that security. I feel like at some places it's better to have a lock. Um, resorts where you where you have to like scan your pass to get up the hill. I think it's a little bit more difficult for people to to steal steal boards there. But yeah, it's always I guess it's a good idea to lock lock them up. Uh, B King says, "Hey Kevin, I hit my first medium jump." With an indie grab, thanks to your video on jumps. Uh, amazing. 
That's uh, great to hear that that helped. Yeah, uh, recently got up a bunch of tutorials and um, yeah, love getting those up for you guys. Uh, Split, Splitcom says, when buying a helmet, do you measure your head once you have your hat and goggles on your head or without? Uh, yeah, I think it's always better that when you're trying on the helmets to actually bring your beanie and bring your goggles with you. That way you can try um, everything on together and make sure it's all, it all fits and it's all comfortable. Uh, Laura's UK Life says, hi Kevin, what, what's the best ski resort in Colorado in early December? Um, is second week uh, odd December too early to go uh, for the season? Uh, it is pretty early to go, but I would just say keep an eye on the weather. Um, Colorado is n pretty notorious for having early starts. And uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with any of those places. There's, I feel like it's pretty consistent. There's not one resort there that I think gets uh, like a considerable amount more than others. But um, yeah, I feel like Colorado has good early season, so it may be worth it early December to go for sure. Um, if, it, if the snow's good, we may be doing an early Colorado trip as well. Uh, BC with the super chat. Uh, what tips do you have when going to a new resort? Uh, good question. That, that's a good one. I would say um, ahead of time, maybe look at if you're driving to the resort, uh, look at the best place to park if there's like free parking or how much it is to pay because sometimes that can get you with like how much you have to pay for parking. Uh, but then once you get to the resort, maybe get a, a trail map and start looking at all the different spots. Even like ask, ask some locals like, if they have any advice on where you should go that day because uh, you know, when you get to a resort, the, uh, where you go is definitely, it's kind of dependent on the weather too. So um, just ask some people um, recommend recommendations. Uh, but something I like to do as well is like kind of just get to one of the, the higher lifts and uh, so that you can kind of uh, get up as high as you can and get like a, a perspective on the mountain too. So yeah, just do some exploring, talk to people, read the map. And uh, yeah, just uh, take your time your first day on, on, on a new resort too, because sometimes there's uh, just differences in the way things are laid out. Maybe there's some hazards that you're not used to. Maybe the trees are a little bit different than you're used to. So um, it may take you like a day or two just to get comfortable with, with the whole layout and the new, the new riding style of that mountain. And Adam Searles says, hey, Kevin, have you ever taken two boards up the mountain uh, to switch it up during the day? I want to practice switch with my T-Rise Pro, and I, I don't see this happening with my Orca. <laughs> uh, good question. I, uh, I, I normally don't do that unless we're like making a video about two boards. But yeah, you, you know, might as well do it if you want to, Adam, for sure, man. If you got, if you want to ride some like powder on the orca in the morning and then practice your switch in the afternoon, definitely bring two boards. Why not? Uh, John says, uh, so hyped for your tricks playlist this year. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. If you guys haven't yet, check out that snowboard tricks playlist. There's like uh, there, no, there must be like a hundred videos on there with different, all kinds of different trick tips and uh, terrain park tips. So yeah, check it out. And yeah, stoked to have 135 people still in the chat, 66 likes. Uh, thanks so much everyone for tuning in. I guess like, yeah, snowboard season is coming up quickly here in North America. So it's, uh, it's, a, and it's, it's an exciting time um, in snowboarding. It's like that anticipation before uh, all the mountains start opening, before we start to get uh, snow on the mountains. Here in Whistler, we've actually gotten, we've gotten to see, see quite a lot of snow on the peaks. And uh, it's fun too, just putting together those last pieces of gear that you need. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty good for the season. There's a couple things I need to get, but uh, it, it's super, it's pretty fun when you get your new board set up or even if you have your old board set up and you kind of 
uh, tune it up for the season, getting it ready. All that anticipation is is pretty fun. So, um, yeah, thank you guys all for for jumping on here with me. Oh, phone's going a little crazy. Uh, Ivan Pierce on here with the super chat. What's up, Ivan? Thanks for tuning in, man. And Ivan says, "Hi, Kevin. Any advice for Carrie to get her confidence back?" Every time she progresses a bit, she has a bad fall or gets taken out. Oh no. Three times in New Zealand the last trip. Uh, sorry to hear that, Ivan. And he says, love the videos. Um, yeah, that's a tough one because I feel like New Zealand is, uh, even though like it's a great place, the, the way the runs are laid out, there is a lot of uh, like cross traffic and there, like people aren't necessarily always all going in the same direction. So I can see, I can definitely see that that being a risk, especially in New Zealand of people possibly like banging into each other, uh, people getting cut off collisions. Actually TJ had a collision <clears throat> at Cardona this last uh, trip too. It was just two runs that kind of like merged into one and just created that situation where um, they crashed. So, I would say like advice would be maybe try some, maybe just get into the habit. Maybe Carrie can get into the habit of <coughs> as she's riding, um, you know, like looking uphill, looking at the sides, making sure that things are clear. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a tough call because it's like one of those things that when you're snowboarding, you want to be like focusing on what's ahead of you, riding, like en enjoying it um, and not having to worry about other people. But um, I guess maybe like before you drop in, even you can kind of like uh, she can take a look at the at the run and and look at the layout and see where there may be uh, possibilities of people dropping in from the sides. Um, Hey, what's up, man? What's up, Kevin? <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe like she can plan that ahead of time, uh, and then also like just maybe doing some practice for herself, like staying in control, so that if there is somebody else uh, possibly coming towards her, that she can do some uh, quick turns to either slam on the brakes or to move off to the side and get, and get out of the way. Uh, but yeah, really great question, Ivan. I hope that uh, she gets her confidence back and. Um, yeah, hope, hope, I hope she's like all good and, and feeling good and uh, you guys get back out there soon. All right, so we got TJ going to hop in here. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, dude? Good dude, to see welcome you. Welcome back to Canada. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is the first time I got to see you since I got back. Oh, uh, yeah. It's only been like a day, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it feels good to be back. Thank you, man. Yeah, so TJ's been in, so you were, we were in Jindabyne and then yeah. you, you went to Sydney for a while yeah i spent about four days in sydney a couple nice. weekends and a few days back in jindabyne so nice yeah, it was good how's the uh and the last day that we were in jindabyne too at parachute you kind of had like a, a nasty fall there you kind of got some whiplash how's your back feeling yeah it's feeling uh much better um i've got pretty much most of my range of motion back now so just like nice. a little bit of residual pain but nice but yeah feeling like let's say like 90 percent 90 percent Got that neck movement. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried anything like strenuous or like yeah. really like active yet, but um, but yeah, it's going good. Thanks, man. How is the uh, the flight too? That that flight is like 13 hours on the plane from Auckland to Vancouver. Yeah, it was a long flight. Honestly, mm. though, I it was the I got so lucky, man. I got um, it was like three rows of seats, and there was no one next to me, so Perfect. I had like three seats. So nice. I had that too on the way back on the last one. You yeah. did? Yeah. Oh, epic, dude. Yeah, <laughs> can't ask for more than that. And uh, what else? Oh, so TJ also, he just moved in with Andreas. Uh, if you guys have seen Andreas on the channel in some videos. Yep. How's yeah. the new place? It's good, man. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm actually just uh, moving the last of my stuff out of the storage unit today and um, nice. setting it up. It's it's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. It should cool. be good. Cool. All yeah. right. Dude, how's uh, how's Whistler been, been for you since you've been back? It's been uh, a little more time out here than I have. Yeah, Whistler is like, it's kind of like the rainy season at the moment. So there's some rain. I went to Vancouver Island for five days. That was really fun. That Sweet. was cool. Um, it was sunny over there, but yeah, I'm bummed. Uh, I'm going solo to New Zealand. I know, dude. It's like you're leaving tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yeah. Crazy, man. I wish, yeah. It's going to be jealous. weird. It's going to be weird doing a solo trip. 
Yeah. But I think uh, that we have some friends out there, like our friend Tim, and yeah. I think David might come visit. Hopefully. And uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, let's get back into some questions. If you guys have any questions for TJ, hit us up. Um, yeah, so Thomas with the super chat says, best bars, clubs in Whistler Village. What oh, do you think? Man. What do you think are the best uh, clubs? Um, Oh, I don't know. I haven't been to too many, but um, I know the Cinnamon Bear um, has some pool tables. So if you're like oh, yeah. the type that likes to do activities while you're out, that's a cool spot. Um, yeah, I like the Cinnamon Bear. I would say my favorite club when I was a big club or clubbing person was uh, Mojo's. Have you been to Mojo's? Mojo's. Um, I don't think you have. I don't know if that I have. Is that like a more like a proper it's like a club club i think i think maybe i went there once actually last oh, year cool but yeah yeah i think that's like the one place i went but yeah <laughs> yeah there's like tons of spots in the village so i'm sure you know you'll like find the one you like the best yeah yeah all right, all right let's see if there's any uh tj specific questions in here uh john says hey kevin i'm glad you made the capita doa video last season because i bought it right after i watched the video <laughs> nice right. john yeah sick good uh good choice yeah that, that's a fun board uh marcio oh i saw somebody bought the uh, battalion uh your battalion board too uh adam and yeah season, right? adam and yeah i um I think he, there were just those end of season deals down there in New Zealand, oh, nice. and so he just like jumped on it. And I, I was uh, messaging him about it, and he said he's never tried three BT. So wow. uh, I hope he likes it. I told him, you know, it's gonna it's gonna butter like he's never felt before. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's uh, it's always cool to see you know someone uh, choose a board based on the videos. Yeah, friend. So Adam, he's uh, works at Domino's in Wanaka. So shout out shout out Domino's Wanaka. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, he picked up the Battalion Evil Twin, so that's uh, TJ's new board for the season. Yeah, excited to, to get into Whistler Parks with it. Marcio says, how do you like GNU boards with magnet traction? Um, I love them. I love the magnet traction. I feel like I don't want to ride a board without magnet traction, so it's uh, it's been great. I feel like the, the park in New Zealand was pretty firm and solid, and it just like held a, an edge like a dream, so... Um, if you haven't tried it, I definitely recommend it, especially if you're on the East Coast where there's a lot of icy and firm riding. I think it'll really help. Yeah, there was a couple of situations at Cardrona where Kevin was doing like these heel side side hits that I was like, <laughs> I'm not touching that. Yeah. He was just ripping it. So yeah, it definitely makes a difference. Uh, Roman wants to know, are you from Canada? Uh, so I'm from Canada. Uh, born near Toronto, but then moved out to Whistler. TJ, where are you from? I'm from uh, North Carolina. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> USA. Uh, all right. So I had, to, okay. Uh, Heroin Zumi says, I, ha I had to do some switch riding on my Burton Deep Thinker this year. Worked surprisingly well. Nice. You must have had the stance pretty centered, possibly. Yeah. I think if you have the stance like very centered, um, you know, even if there's a taper there, you won't feel it too much. For sure. Uh, Chuck Van, hey Kev, how do you psych yourself into trying a new trick for the first time? I'm already struggling with fear and chickening out. Uh, TJ, how do you psych yourself up for a, a first ever trick? Um, I mean, definitely like the, the preparation is huge, like feeling like you know, you know for sure you've got all the skills to do it. Um, you know, like say maybe spinning a, a big jump for the first time, make sure you're comfortable hitting it a bunch. Um, Maybe yeah. like putting in music in one ear um, that like uh, yeah. will amp you up. That's something that's helped me before. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you, yeah, if you work up to it too, it's like if you're maybe on a feature that you've uh, do a bunch of ch other tricks that you're comfortable with, or, you know, even just getting comfortable on that feature with doing something easy, doing that a lot. So then when it comes time to try the trick, you've got the speed down, you've got, you're comfortable, you know how the snow feels. And also when I try a new trick, it's usually on a day when the snow is in good shape too. If it's like Definitely. ice, if it's icy, I'm probably, or if the park is not in great shape, I'm just not really trying things I've never done before. Yeah, same. Yeah, you wanna minimize the chances of something going wrong as much as you can, but um, yeah, you know, just gotta go for it once you, once you have everything in place. Uh, Tristan Block says, where can I buy the David poster in the background? <laughs> um, 
I uh, I don't know if they I don't think he has them for sale, uh, but message David. I think on Instagram it's uh, D A Y V I D Jones um, on Instagram, and so yeah, send him a DM. Uh, I'm sure he'll uh, make would, one for you. That would be so funny if that just <laughs> became like a standard merch for David. Yeah, autographed Napoleon esque poster. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, John X Game says, crash pants all the way. Uh, yeah, I wear crash pants. Uh, TJ, you haven't, you haven't gotten into the crash pants game yet, though. No, no. I think, um, I think this season's going to be the season I pick some up, though. Yeah. But I feel like if you don't hit, if you don't, haven't needed them, then you might not need them at all. I mean, know? I haven't the last couple of seasons, I will say, but I've had some bad like tailbone crashes in the past. Yeah, those so, are the worst. Yeah. I mean, I know there's going to be like some days where it's icy and like I wish I had them, so I might as well, you know, just be ready. I don't know if I'll wear them every day though, but yeah, like yeah. I only wear mine when it's like a, only on park days, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, and even I guess I do. I wear them in the slush too, because I think if like if I slide out and hit my tailbone on like. You could hit a, a feature. Something metal, that yeah. would really suck. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> all right, so Thomas with the Super Chat. Oh, we already got to that one. Uh, Roman with the Super Chat. Seems like you guys are traveling all over the world riding. Uh, how do you guys deal with all that jet lag, LOL? Yeah. Um, we don't deal with it. We just uh, <laughs> just the same take way, it. The same way everyone else does, man. Yeah, it's rough. It's just um, rough, yeah. Dude, yeah, actually, how, how was it for you the first, like, week back in, in Canada? Um, yeah, it was tough because I was staying up until, like, 5 o'clock in the morning and going to uh, waking up at, like, noon. Um, yeah. But I, I, at one point, I forced myself to go to bed f fairly early. I think you just, like, you know, you just work your way back like every day it gets a little bit easier yeah yeah and if you can just like have one of those days where you go to bed at like a normal time and set an alarm i think setting an alarm helps you get it back on schedule yeah yeah i need to I've, I've so to me this is day i've had two sleeps since i've been back and yeah i've been it's been trouble to wake up before noon like i've woken up past noon both days so wow yeah trying though tomorrow i'm, I'm setting an alarm like <laughs> and just gonna force it Nice. Uh, ben just says, what do you think about LibTech's Skate Banana board? Uh, what do you think about the Skate Banana? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, for just an easy to control, like beginner friendly board that has all the tech, you know, magnet traction. Um, yeah, like the BTX, like super rocker profile. It's a, it's a good board. I actually haven't ridden the Skate Banana though. Oh, wow. Um, I've ridden the Carbon Credit, um, which I believe has changed now. Um, but it used to be very, very similar to the Skate Banana. And um, Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, Skate Banana is good if you're a beginner or if you just like a really jibby board. If you're intermediate or advanced and want to just work on rails and presses and stuff, it's yeah. like very like forgiving. Um, and yeah, good beginner board too. Yeah, flexy. Um, William says, just bought the Orca because of you guys. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I hope you, uh, hope you like it, man. Yeah. Orca this, yeah, it's going to be the year of the Orca, man. I feel like last year it already was. And like now hopefully LibTech made more of them. I think so. so. Uh, yeah. yeah. They've made a lot more, a lot more sizes. Um, but yeah, I honestly just trying to ride the best possible boards, um, and then recommend them to you guys or just at least show you guys what those boards are like like I th i'm sure you're the same way like getting the uh evil twin that's like your favorite board and yeah you'd be stoked if other people tried it out too right absolutely like, yeah that's yeah. the goal you know just uh have people stoked on their gear yeah yeah because why would we get stuff that we don't like and then recommend it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't do that why would you yeah, why would you do that yeah so but yeah that's amazing to hear though that you uh that picked up that board all right, Joe Stazone says, TJ might have some feedback on this. I just got the War Pig. My bindings are Union Flight, kind of entry-level binding from Union. They're a soft flex. Do you think it would, uh, it's a weird pair? Um, yeah, so as far as like a budget binding go, I think the Flight, the Union Flight Pro is a, you know, one of the best to be looking at. But um, for the War Pig, it is, it is a bit soft of a binding. So, um, 
you know, I, I think it'll totally work, but um, I think you could get more out of the board if you had a bit of a, a stiffer, more responsive binding. So um, when the time comes, you know, maybe upgrade, but yeah, I think, you know, you'll be, you'll be all right. Yeah, you could, you know, you can maybe sell them too. I don't know, like, if you've got them, how long you've had those bindings for, but maybe sell the old pair and get a new pair and, or look out for some, uh, sometimes some of the old last season's uh, bindings are, are on sale now too. So, um, but yeah, like that, I guess it's like, that can be a hard charging board for like carving and going into powder and you kind of want to have like a, board, a binding that matches. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, that way um, you're able to, you know, get the full uh, full power out of the board or as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, Photo Giza says, hi, Kevin and TJ. I'm looking to improve my Flatland jib tricks. I've uh, been eyeing up the new LibTech box scratcher. Do you rate it for my purpose or is there something more suitable? Any rec uh, recommendation for length? 175 pounds. Um, no, I think the box scratcher. That's like a that's a good choice for that. Yeah, it's got the so the box scratcher is like uh, C2, I think. I don't know off the top uh, of my head. I think it's, there's there's a few of those LibTech boards that have like really <clears throat> similar names. Yeah. But, yeah I think <laughs> box that knife, one... box scratcher. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it is. I think it's like that rocker cambo camber combo i think it's supposed to be like soft enough for butters and flat ground tricks yeah um but yeah uh and then if you're 175 pounds i don't know what lengths it comes in but maybe like a 150 around a 156 157 somewhere yeah. in there yeah i think that'd be pretty solid yeah i get some some jibs and butters going uh, Joey Bill says, TJ, what's your opinion on the Burton Kilroy 3D and Solomon Huck knife? Looking into getting a new park board, and those are the two I've been drawn to. Awesome. Uh, and you've ridden both those boards recently too, right? Yeah. So uh, the Huck knife, I, it's been a little bit longer, but I rode the Huck knife Pro recently. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I think, honestly, the Huck knife Pro is more comparable to the Kilroy 3D because um, it's actually surprisingly stiff. Like Kevin, you Kevin rode the the 3d as well out at high cascade yeah and, it felt um, pretty stiff yeah it's um yeah it's not a super soft board i would say the huck knife um the regular huck knife is definitely a much more of a jibby pressable option still a good all-around park board um but the kilroy 3d is definitely going to take you know more muscle to flex going to have um more camber in it um you'll get more pop and stability out of it so um yeah if you want more stability more energy maybe go for the kilroy 3d if you want something jibbier um, but still a good all-around park board maybe go for the huck knife yeah i think too like the the kilroy 3d is maybe a more advanced rider board yeah. where the solomon huck knife is probably more more like beginner intermediate and even advanced but sort of maybe if maybe more suitable for intermediate to beginner yeah absolutely yeah the kilroy um if yeah if you're still learning it's going to be it's going to make it harder for sure all right. Um, high side ASB says, "Hey gents, uh, loving the video videos, guys. How do you guys rate Arbor Grip Tech compared to Magnet Traction?" Ooh, oh, good great, question. Yeah, great question, man. Uh, they're similar, it, but it's, I think the Grip Tech it's it's one of those um, tools on the board. It does help it to help the board to grip. You definitely feel it, um, even just like say on, on an approach for um, for doing a trick or something, you can feel those like extra contact points like helping you out. But it's not as aggressive. It's not like uh, it's it's definitely different than magnet traction. Yeah, I think um, if if as far as like just added grip, magnet traction is definitely on a the next level versus grip tech. Um, I feel like you can really feel it on, through the entire length of the board, which is really cool. Whereas grip tech um, is more isolated under your feet. Um, still great, but yeah, definitely yeah. mellower for sure. Yeah. I think both are good though. I think I like the idea of something, just having that definitely. little, little extra something is nice. I, yeah, I'm a fan of grip tech as well. <laughs> BC with the super chat says, what does TJ stand for? Terrific gibber or, uh, <laughs> not quite, not quite. Uh, so Tony James, Tony James. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of an odd, um, thing that, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my proper name is actually Anthony. So I'll let you guys simmer on that. <laughs> I go by TJ. Nice. There you go. 
Uh, Bad Riders, uh, are you guys upgrading to the Hero 8? Whoa, hashtag DWCP life. Dude, have you seen the uh, the video for the Hero 8 yet? I've seen some videos, yeah. I haven't looked at any of the reviews yet, um, but I saw the actual like, GoPro ad for it, and uh, yeah, I want it for sure. I'm gonna try to get it as soon as possible, I think. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think I'll probably get two Hero 8s, yeah. One for the, well, I don't know. Do they have one for the gimbal? Is it gonna go with that gimbal, do you know? Oh, I don't know. Um, I would imagine it's probably the same shape and it would be compatible, but um, I haven't researched it that far yet. Yeah, but, but yeah, definitely, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely be upgrading. That's got some cool um, new features. For sure. yeah. yeah. Um, Mystique hit, uh, says, hey, I'm from New Zealand and I, I went snowboarding for my third time and it, and it was absolutely amazing. I understand why you guys enjoy it. Oh, cool. Great. Awesome to hear you're getting into it. Uh, Geraldo, hey guys, huge fan, starting to hit medium jumps, but sometimes land toe or heel heavy. Uh, how would you avoid this? Uh, so think about your takeoff. So when you take off, you're, you must be a little bit toe or heel heavy on the takeoff. So just think of like popping like straight up. Yep. And that's, that's about it. Yeah. yeah. The landing is done on the takeoff. You know, once you're in the air, it's, it's set. So yeah. Um, yeah, think about maybe your posture over your board too, as you take off, like making sure that your back is like a little bit straight, you're stacked over top of your board, you're not kind of like leaning out one way or the other. Adam says crash pants make chairlifts more comfortable. That's like a, one of the hidden benefits. Hidden bonus. Yeah. <laughs> Believe that. Uh, Photo Giza says, hi guys, pros and cons of 159 centimeters over 153 centimeter Orca. Is the Orca worth the hype? Um, I think it's worth the hype. I, I think it's a great board. And in terms of 59 versus 53, it's just going to depend on your weight. Um, so last year I rode the 53 mainly because that was the only length I could get. And I think I was kind of like at the top weight limit for that size. So it is meant to be ridden a little bit shorter. Um, so yeah, depending on your weight, I, I would say if you're 170 pounds, 175 pounds and under the 153, but if you're like 180 and over, then maybe check out the 159. Yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be excited to hear your thoughts on the 159 and some <laughs> proper pow once we get those pow days coming. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think I. I think I could definitely use those extra centimeters. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna. It's gonna flow really good. Uh, lots of crash pants question cra questions. <laughs> Bryce, what cr crash pants do you have, Kevin? Um, so I've got the the Burton ones. I don't know what the model is, but yeah, they're Burton crash pants. Uh, Goro says, hey, Kevin or TJ, going to Hokkaido first time on, on late December. I'm beginner, so what should I bring in my backpack despite food? Uh, for safety, I mean, thanks. Uh, you don't really, I don't know, safety-wise, nothing? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be, like, in the resort, I think, you know, you don't have to worry about really bringing extra safety gear. It, you know, it's like your typical resort scenario. But, yeah, you so you're going to have... Uh, so if it's your first time too, what, you, you can just bring the stuff you want in your backpack, throw it on the side somewhere, maybe even put it inside. Um, yeah, you can bring stuff like, usually the resort will have like water and, and food, but you can bring that if, if you want to. And I guess actually like for somebody on their first time, it's good to bring, I don't know, like to have a bag to like throw, if to bring an extra layer maybe. Yeah, extra layer. Um you know, maybe like an extra pair of gloves or something, a thicker pair, a thinner pair. Yeah. Um, maybe a yeah. change of socks or even shoes. So at the end of the day, you can like take your um, boots off and put your shoes and, and maybe a different pair of socks. Yeah. It kind of depends on like the weather, the temperature, um, depends on you. But yeah, it's good to kind of have some backup things that you can you can grab, but I would say like, don't wear your backpack when you're learning that can kind of like throw off your weight. Yeah. And it's, it's a safe area. Usually there'll be a spot where people are throwing their backpacks and it's, I've never had issues leaving, leaving mine there. So. All right. So Edward, what should I do to take care of my snowboard in summer? Um, I think just like wax it and then put it somewhere where, that is dry and that's, yeah. Yeah. If you, if you can, um, leave it, 
vertically, like leaning on a wall or something. Don't have it like pressed with weight on it. And um, yeah, that's about it. What about your bindings? Do you do up your bindings? Um, well, like, I, if yeah. it's vertical, that your bindings just. Yeah, well, usually I'll take the bindings oh, off. Oh, okay, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I do try to do up the bindings either way. Yeah. yeah. Even if they're just sitting around. I think even doing up your boots is a good idea too because it helps it to keep the shape. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Leo wants to know, TJ, uh, I know you reviewed Nitro Beast. How do you like it? Yeah, I, I had a fun time on it. Wrote it out at Keystone and um, it is, it's a lot of board, man. It's a very aggressive, stiff, camber, um, park board you know it's like definitely more more of a big jump go fast uh very precise locked in kind of feel board um not my personal favorite style of board but um if if that's what you're into it's a great choice man it's it's uh it's an aggressive one <laughs> would you say it's like an advanced rider board it's absolutely an advanced <laughs> it's, board. Yeah, like okay. if you're even intermediate like I, I wouldn't go for it I'd, yeah it's an advanced board uh, Roman with the super chat says, uh, make a reaction video of first time skiing. Ooh. Uh, well, we've already skied before, so we can't do like a first time skiing video. Won't be video. legit first time, but we could maybe do a swap day on like, uh, the end of the season or something. There's that one day where everyone goofs off. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard uh, sell. Roman with the five dollar super chat. Hey, I'm six two and ride a one sixty two wide, but my toes still poke out. Uh, do they make snowboards to cover toes fully? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can get like wider wide boards, uh, but what size are your feet? Um, you must have like what do you have like size thirteen, fourteens. Um, yeah, make make sure that your bindings are also adjusted properly and, and they're centered over the, the board as well because if your heels aren't hanging off at all and your toes are hanging off a lot, then you can you can fix that decently well with the binding adjustment. But um, yeah, maybe, maybe like a, a volume shifted board. Um, you could check that out, try to help you out with that. Um, and even if like, I would say too, it's like if your t heels and toes are hanging over the edge a little bit, as long as it's not affecting your riding, then you should be all good. So true. Uh, I don't know if you've ridden this board yet, but if your toes, it's, it is natural for your boots to be poking out over the board a little bit. That's true. So if you do have size 12s or 13s and you have a wide board, um, you should be, you should be okay. Uh, Jag says, would you recommend the BOA system over laces? Uh, for me, I'm, I still just like the, the traditional laces, uh, personally, I find that they work totally fine. Same. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm still, uh, I'm still a fan of the traditional lacing, so, um, I don't see myself switching to, to full boa anytime soon. Are you going to go back to the Adidas boots? I don't know. There, so I think I still got some life left in the rides. Um, I don't know. There's a, a new boot that 32 is making that I kind of want to check out. Um, but if I don't go for that, I'll probably go back to Adidas. I think they were just so comfortable and. Or maybe you yeah. could ride Vans and I'll ride Adidas. We can switch. That too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some. There's some options. All right. Thanks for all the questions, guys. Yeah, I gotta get through these uh, quicker. Um, all right, Johnny. Hi, TJ and Kevin. Have you ridden Solomon hologram bindings? Interested in the Shadow Fit Tech? Thanks. Um, I have not. Haven't tried Solomon bindings yet, but yeah, the the Shadow Fit. I think that's like the the heel cup that is able to bend a little bit. I'm pretty sure. Oh, nice. So yeah, that looks really cool. I I, I don't know how it feels though, but um, I imagine for park riding, it's probably pretty sick. Nice. And Jen says he just got back uh, from a meet and greet with Jake and Donna Burton. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Did you put in a good word for us? <laughs> Did we come up in the conversation? <laughs> I don't know why, what that would do, but yeah. Um, well, that's no, that's, that's cool, man. I'm sure the, Jake is a cool guy and Donna as well. They'll be like, we're sending you guys 40 Burton boards and like, no, we don't want them. I don't want to ride the headspace. Um, oh yeah. Engine, you're a, a Mervin guy too. What are you doing? Talking to Donna and Jake Burton, switching it up. Damn. He's a traitor. Um, 
Uh, all right, Nathaniel says, uh, hey fellas, how do you like the Super DOA? Thinking about getting it when it comes on sale. Um, yeah, what do you, who, who do you think the Super DOA is made, made for? You know, I think it's for that, uh, that person looking for an all-mountain freestyle board that um, really wants like no compromises in the park, um, but still wants something that's, you know, going to be pretty stable going at high speeds and able to rip around the mountain confidently as well. Um, yeah, more like just like a resort kind of park board. I honestly, I, I do like it more than the, than the DOA. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, um, it's stiffer in the middle, um, and it gets a little bit it's, uh, softer out in the tips. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I think it's, it's more fun in the park, and it's uh, better for all mountain stuff, too. So, so more pre more, it's easier to, to press than the DOA? Yeah, um, I don't know if it's easier, per se, maybe slightly. Um, so the DOA is kind of hard to press. But... I think that you get the same kind of flex that you get out of the DOA um, while still be getting more stability when you want it to, like on bigger jumps or going really fast. Because cool. like the DOA is definitely pretty soft, like in the middle torsionally. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a good board, man. All right. Um, Will Kaylee wants to know, what do you think about the Capita Slush Slasher? <laughs> he does want to know. <laughs> I got to put him in time out because he asked it like 40 times. Yeah, that's, don't spam. All right. Yeah, so what do we think of the Slush Slasher? Yeah, it's fun, you know, surfy, wide shape, good in powder, flat camber. It's fun, soft. Nice. Yeah. It's All right. exactly what the name says, the Slush Slasher. All right. Um... What are your top five all mountain boards? <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's do like a few each. Um, so I like the Orca all mountain. That's a good one. Yep. Um, uh, Kazu, go to for me. That was that was a fun one last year. Uh, the Burton Deep Thinker is pretty fun. Uh, had some good times with it and some powder. Yep. Yeah, I think um, the Arbor Iguchi Pro is a really fun one. Nice. Um, what else is over there? Um, actually, the the GNU Space Case was was pretty good all mountain. Yeah. Well, they don't make that one anymore, but now it's called the Finest. So. Oh yeah. Not yeah. technically an all mountain board, but I definitely had a really good time with it. If you all want, over the mountain. If you want something uh, special and unique, check out the Gent Hemstick XY. That's definitely a standout for me. Really fun one. Oh wow! Yeah. Carving free ride. It's a really special one. Yeah. Um. Sweet. All right. All right. Thanks for all the questions, guys. Going to scroll through a little bit here. Yeah, man, we, there's 150 people on the chat right now. That's oh, amazing. Sick. sick. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, Cameron, what are your tips for getting into the park? Um, yeah, a few tips. I would say, like, before you get into the park, practice lots of switch riding. Um, switch riding is, like, really key for learning any tricks in the park. Got any? Yeah, get comfortable on like small natural features like rollers and side hits and you know just uh, doing little ollies and stuff like that. I think that'll help out before you hit some proper park stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, lots of side hits, ollies. Um, learning to ride with more speed too, just like being in control, riding on on all type uh, all types of terrain uh, with a bit of speed, just. Uh, gives you like more confidence because when you go to hit your first like small jump you do need to take a little bit of speed in and then when you land too you want to be have some confidence with speed for the landing so yep makes makes everything easier uh and a question to go right with this any tips on building up confidence in boarding with increased speed um yeah there's actually a video on the channel that I uh, put up recently for building up your confidence with speed. Um, but yeah, I think one is like definitely like having control over your edges. So making lots of um, quick, short turns to control, control yourself and feel like, yeah, you're in control. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably the biggest for me, just like, yeah, having that really solid edge control and um, being very confident being able to control your speed as well so when you do feel like you're going a little too fast you can slow down no problem um albert says are nike boots any good um 
They're good, but uh, can you find them? Uh, I don't know. Is there any left? Uh, uh, Nike hasn't made snowboard boots in a few years. I feel like I still see them around the mountains somehow, sometimes, but um, yeah. yeah, they stopped making boots a while back. All right. Um, <laughs> Chuck Van says, TJ, your thoughts on the Never Summer Prototype 2? A dude in a shop tried to sell me on it. Is it the profile aggressive? Um, and who is it for in your opinion? Yeah, so uh, I think the Prototype 2 is a really fun board. Every time I've ridden it, um, I've ridden it a couple of times. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's, it is a rocker dominant uh, snowboard, but it's got that rocker um, camber going on. Um, I think it's the, the rip saw, so it's got more camber under your foot than um, the basic version Never Summer does. So yeah, it's fun. It's a good like all mountain freestyle board. Um, I, I enjoyed it all around the park and um, it does well carving, but it's it's not like a super high speed charging kind of board. More of a, a little looser all mountain freestyle kind of board. It is fun though. Nice. All right. Um, well, tons of questions, guys. Thank you, guys. Tacos or burritos from RD seventy seven. Recently, I've been on the, the taco salad kick. Oh, snap. Nice. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good taco salad in uh, um, Banditas here in Whistler. Is it called Banditas? The place in Whistler has really good taco oh, cool. salads. I'll have to try that out. Yeah, I, uh, I almost got a, a burrito from La Cantina last night. Oh, uh, La Cantina, that's what I meant. Yeah. I ended up not. Um, okay. I'm still on the burrito kick. Actually, the first thing I did when I got to Vancouver was go to Chipotle. <laughs> nice. Wow. TJ loves Chipotle. You know, you can't miss that opportunity. <laughs> uh, B Kings, uh, 1499 Australian. Wait, did you pick up your car in Squamish, then go back to Vancouver to get it? No. So it actually created odd way of getting to Squamish, but um, I looked into the bus fares and I actually ended up renting a car. So I picked it up in Vancouver and drove it up to Squamish and dropped it off. And there's an enterprise in both. Oh, and, um, wow. yeah. So it was like it was like 60 for the bus or 48 for the rental car. So I was like, nice. Let's get a rental oh, car. very smart. Yeah. Damn, is 60 dollars for a bus from the airport to Squamish? Yeah. She. <laughs> yeah. So um, and and plus then you got a taxi like and oh, okay. all that kind of stuff. It was a com complex scenario the way I had everything set up. Oh, that's so. smart. Yeah, I just get the rental car. Yeah, wow. Uh, B Kings with the super chat says, "Hey TJ, what comes after the Evil Twin? Or you just keep getting the new one every season? Such an awesome fun board. I absolutely love it. Maybe Super DOA." <laughs> Yeah, great question, man. Um, I don't know. We'll have to have to see what happens, but I think for that category, you know, that kind of go-to all-around park board, it's going to be the Evil Twin for me this year. Um, still a huge fan of the Westmark Camber as well, but um, yeah, maybe the Super DOA, maybe I don't know, maybe the Huck Knife Pro. I don't know. Who the, knows? The Twin Pig could go back to the Twin Pig. <laughs> there's there's a lot of great boards out there, but um, I think for for me this year, the 3BT and the Flex and the Camber on the Evil Twin is just exactly what I want, so. Nice. Um, Patrick says, I'm going to a board swap tomorrow. Uh, what are things to look for when inspecting a board to make sure you don't buy something that's gonna break in the near future or have problems? Um, oh. Yeah, great question. I would just like scan around the board, look for, any like anything that looks like an impact, like if something looks like it's been hit or dented, um, also just big gouges in the base. And if there's like repairs in the base that maybe look like are not going to hold, which is kind of hard to tell, but yeah, sometimes if you have like a big gash in the base, then that means there could possibly have been. Actually, the the thing you look out for the most too is like homemade repairs. So stuff that people have just done themselves, you, you can usually tell, I think. Yeah. But yeah, those those are big. I would say also um, cracks in the edges, um, even if it's not like impacted, if there's a bunch of cracks around the edges, that might be, you know, just kind of showing the use of that board. Maybe it's it's been used more than they're telling you. Yeah. Um, 
and I would definitely flex it um, thoroughly in all parts of the board to feel oh. if make sure the flex is consistent and you can't don't notice any like cracks in the core. Yeah, you don't want to like go for a f to flex the board and it just feel like really soft and easy to flex. Maybe like flex a few different boards there. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't need it to be super stiff, but you don't want it to feel like a noodle. Yep. Um, so yeah, good luck at the board swap, man. That sounds like a could be pretty fun. All right, let's uh, go for a few more. Uh, I be. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nice, nice. Really? Wow. <laughs> Man, I, I've almost gotten caught a few times on that. That was that. Uh, yeah, that one's sneaky. Jeremy, would the DOA be a good board to learn uh, the park with? For an, for an experienced all mountain rider that doesn't want to sacrifice too much outside the park, uh, what would you guys recommend using? Uh, yeah, the DOA is a good choice there. If you don't want to sacrifice the outside the park rideability, um, that's a good choice. Yeah, absolutely. I'd also throw the Westmark Camber out there as an alternative. Um, yep. Yeah, for yeah, sure. The DOA is sick, man. Um, even the the GNU Headspace, although the Headspace you may think is too soft, but yeah, the the DOA it's a good one. The, yeah, the magnet traction might be might be worth a compromise, but that's for for that's you to true. decide. Yep. All right. Um, <laughs> Caught it up says, if you ever stop posting on YouTube, I'm going to stop watching YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. That's like, uh, that's loyalty right there. That's a, such a huge compliment, man. Uh, Ethan, any tips on doing a beginner board slide on a box? Um, yeah, the, the tip I always tell people is to first ride on 50-50 and then like twist your board a little bit sideways, like halfway across the box. And then each time you ride, just like keep twisting until you get your board fully sideways. And then eventually you can just commit to being sideways from the start. Yep. Um, any other tips uh, come to your mind? Um, I think honestly, that's, that's the best one. You know, that's what yeah. I would focus on. Yeah. Yeah, you can even practice it on the snow too ahead of time or and make sure you have your switch riding down and all that stuff and but yeah. Yeah, get your make sure you have your front side shifties comfortable. All right. Um sweet. Let's uh oh. Mike Turner with the super chat. What's the best all mountain board under six hundred dollars? Wow. American? I think the Orca comes in under 600, just yeah, under. Yeah, I, I think it's 599. Yeah, yeah, that's like most, that's like almost every board. To from. <laughs> yeah, the Orca or, I don't know, there's lots. Yeah, there's so many good all-mountain boards, man. Um, I would say, you know, more, if you're looking at every board, you know, maybe you can dial it into something a bit more specific. Like, are you more interested in carving? Are you more interested in powder performance or, yeah. Um, but yeah, our go-to's, you know, my go-to's the Kazu right now. Um, yeah. Nice. Awesome guys. Uh, just got over the one and a half hour mark. Uh, I think I'm going to call it there guys, but yeah, thank you guys all for tuning in for the, the live chat today. Um, I hope you guys are getting all set up for this coming winter with all your gear and, um, yeah, we're getting some snow here in Whistler and different parts in Colorado. They're getting a bit of snow. So yeah, the, the winter winter's coming and stay tuned because I'm going to be putting up videos from New Zealand soon. So we'll see you guys from there and then yeah. check out TJ's got some videos, some board reviews and things coming as well. Yep. So check him out over at board archive and, uh, yeah, thank you guys for, for hanging out for the hour and a half live chat. Yeah, epic hour and a half. Thanks for all the great questions. Thanks for having me on the chat, dude. Sweet. Thanks, TJ. Yeah. All right. Have a great weekend, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys.